Alright, so um, students, let us continue with our um, confidence interval. So for today, we are going to uh, cover the confidence interval for proportion. Alright, so you can see that for proportion. Okay, so previously we covered the confidence interval for mean. So today we cover another type, lah, which is the confidence interval for proportion. And then uh, for the learning outcome of today, you will see that from a large sample, so um, generally, when you want to find a confidence interval for population proportion, um, there's only one case, which is with the large sample size. Alright, so they want you to approximate the confidence interval for a population proportion. That's it. Okay, so now, what is the meaning of population proportion? So population proportion means the P. How to get the P? It is actually, you take the X number of X divided by the total N, the total number of N, right, to get the proportion, clear or not? Okay, yeah. all right, so um, according to some basic um, concept, uh, how to get a population proportion, generally, it starts from binomial distribution. Okay, so this is the binomial distribution. This is the original uh, distribution. Uh, and then we are going to change it, become sample proportion. Okay, so how to get the sample proportion? Again, the formula is still the same, which is x divided by n. And is distributed approximately as this one. When n is large enough to give mp greater than 5 and mq greater than 5. Alright, so if you look at this, uh, generally, maybe you will think like, hey, how can I change the binomial become this distribution? This is something new that we never learned before. Uh. Alright, so we are not going to cover it in very, very detail. But I just want to show you how it changed. All right. So originally we are having the population. Originally is binomial. So we can actually change the binomial become normal under a certain the certain um rules, right? So when you are having mp greater than five, and also nq greater than five, and also n greater equals to thirty. You can change the x become normal distribution. And then, uh, so this is something that you learned in AS level before. Lah. Okay, so what is the mean from a binomial MP? What is the variance for a binomial MPQ? Alright, so last time we learned about this. Okay, then now we are going to continue further because this is the x, right? And we want to change it become P. So, if let's say x is normally distributed, therefore the p is also normally distributed if the sample size is large. Therefore, it is still normally distributed. So, the mean is p and then the variance is bq over n. Alright, so now maybe some of you will want to ask also, what? how can I know that the mean is p and how will I know that the variance is bq over n? Okay, so there's a proving shown in the uh, below. Okay, alright, so maybe before I start, I just let you know again, P means X divided by N. Yeah, alright, so here they want you to read the proof below for the distribution of the sample proportion. Okay, so you can read through it. Lah. So again, if I want to find the mean for P, so that means it is EPS. Oh. So which is E, X over M, because I think I told you just now, P is actually X over M. Alright, so N is a constant. Therefore, you can take out the 1 over N from the E. And then what is the E, X here? The mean of X is N, P, correct or not? And then you will see that you simplify the N together, become P. So the same thing happened for variance. Uh. So variance P, S means variance X over N. So for a variance, when you want to take out the constant, you need to square the constant. It becomes 1 over n squared. And then what is the value for variance x? The value for variance x is mpq. So when you simplify, you have pq over n. Alright, so that's why you can see that the mean of the proportion is p. The variance for the proportion is pq over n. Alright, so but again, you need uh, no need to know this proof in the exam. <coughs> so it is mainly for understanding only. Okay, so when n is large, so again, we only apply this for n is large, then the p is approximately normal. Alright, yeah. So now, let us continue to the main part of this. 
Okay, so for us, we are, we, are, we are going to focus on how to find the confidence interval for proportion. Uh, for proportion. Alright, so again, there's only one case here for the confidence interval for proportion. So when n is large. Alright, so this is the formula for the confidence limit and this is the confidence interval. The formula. Alright, so the value of z, how to find the value of z and everything is still the same like how you find out last time. Okay, and then what is the Q here? So the Q here is actually 1 minus P. Lah. So I think you should know about it. Okay, so the idea, the concept, everything is almost the same, just that you change the formula a bit and become the proportion only. Alright, so the width, so the width is also this one. Okay, so um so for proportional case is very simple, only one case, uh, and the M must be always large so that the um Proportion is approximately normal distributed. Okay, alright. So, uh, one more thing. You need to know that midpoint of the confidence interval is P or PS. Same thing happened for confidence interval for the mean. So, last time when we learned the confidence interval for mean, this is the formula, right? Okay, so sigma over square n. Okay. Alright, so you should know that for this one, the midpoint is also the sample mean. Alright, because if you draw a graph, uh, the number line, uh, this is sample mean. And then this is sample mean minus z sigma over square root n. And this one will be plus. Okay, and then you see that minus and plus, same value. So that means oh, the distance should be the same. Ah. Therefore, the sample mean will be the midpoint. So same thing happened here. Okay, so the midpoint for this confidence interval will be the uh, proportion. Alright, okay. So we assume that they are normal ah, because of the large sample size. And then uh, there's one thing that you need to know. Continuity correction, we usually omit, uh, omit when calculating the confidence interval. Okay, so because of all this, ah, Sometimes they will ask you why the confidence interval for proportion is just an approximation. That means just an estimation only. Alright, so it's approximate. There are three reasons here. First of all, because it originally comes from binomial, which is discrete. And then you approximate by continuous, right? So that means that there's some difference already in the value. Alright, secondly, we uh, ignore the continuity correction uh, when we carry out the process to find out the confidence interval. So that's why the value will not be very accurate. So it is just an approximation. Alright, and then for the distribution of proportion is also approximately normal only. So it is not exactly normal, but the shape is more or less normal shape. Uh. Alright, so because, because of these three reasons, the confidence interval that we get, it is just an estimation or just a proximate value. Alright, okay, so uh, of course, uh, the very, very detail of concept you don't need to know. So we will focus on mainly how to apply and find the confidence interval for proportion. Alright, and then this, I think, um, this reason, if can, you try to remember it. Uh, I think in the future, they might ask you this kind of question about concept. Uh. Alright. Okay, so if no problem, then we will continue with example 27 first. Okay, so you can read the question before we start. Alright, so from here, what do you get? Alright, so we want to find the proportion of people owning DVD player. And then we are having 203 out of 272 people own a DVD player. Okay, then now they are asking, calculate a 97 confidence interval for the true proportion of people who own a DVD player. So again, you see the keyword 97% percent confidence interval for proportion. Alright, so before we start, there are a few things that I need to have. First of all, I want to know the P or some, some book they will write as PS. Uh. So for me, I'm lazy, I just write out as P proportion. Okay, so to get the proportion, it is X divided by N. 
n is the total sample size, which is 278. And then the x means the number of people who own the DVD player, which is 203. So you have 203 divided by 278. Okay, so for this case, I'm not going to change it become decimal place yet. I will just keep it in fraction form so that uh, I can get the most accurate answer towards the end of the confidence interval. Okay, so uh, if I change it become decimal number now, uh, at the end, I, I, will, I found that my answer will be a bit different from the marking scheme. Now. So I just keep it as fraction first. Okay, so now let's continue. I want to get the 97% confidence interval. Okay, so according to formula, uh, for here, I will just show you the formulas once. Uh. So it is this. Okay, of course, in the exam, you don't need to write out the formula. It won't give you any marks for this. All right, so Z and then square root BQ over N. All right, so you just need to put in all the values. So what is the P203 divided by this? Okay, so minus Z. So of course, I think Z, you need to try to find out 97%. What is the value for the Z? So again, it's a practice for you. If you already forget, please refer back to the previous video. Right. Okay, so for that of 97%, it should be 2.17. So please make sure you go and figure out uh, how to get this 2.17. Okay, so don't just copy and then you don't know how to find it out. You have to find out the 2.17 by yourself. Right. Okay, then square root PQ over N. So the P should be 203 over 278. What is the Q here? So the Q here should be 75 over 278. So you will see that I try to keep everything in fraction first. Alright, so this is the P and this is Q. So Q means 1 minus P. Alright, so the same thing happened for the next value plus. So 203 divided by 278 plus 2.17 and this is what we have. Okay, and then 75 divided by 278 divided by 278. Okay, so you just need to write out this and after that, simplify it into three significant figures. You should be able to get 0 0.672 and also 0 0.788. Alright, so again, just a reminder to you, please make sure you know how to find out the value of Z here. I didn't show you in detail how to find it out, so you need to go and figure out yourself huh? because I discussed it before in another video earlier. Alright, so just make sure that you know how to find out this. Huh? Then the rest, you just need to substitute the value in. So to me, I think it is quite straightforward. Alright, okay, so now, before I continue to the next part, this is how we get the confidence interval for proportion. Okay, all right. So sometimes in some of the question, uh, okay, maybe I write out this one first. So for this, this is the answer for a uh, confidence interval for proportion. All right. If you read the question carefully, sometimes, sometimes uh, they will ask you to find out the confidence interval for percentage. Okay, so if they want you to find the confidence interval for percentage, uh, that means you follow the steps exactly the same, but for the last step, you have to change it become percentage, uh, which is 67.2 and also 78.8%. If they want you to find out the confidence interval for percentage, so you have to look at the question very carefully. All right, but if you want to find the percentage, also the step in front are still the same, just that to the very last step, you change it become percentage only by multiply one, uh, by multiply one hundred percent. Okay. All right. So this is something that you should know. So to me, I think this part is quite straightforward also. You just substitute the value into the formula and then you can get the an answer. Yeah. Right, then let's continue to part number two. Okay, so now they talk about uh, there's a second survey to find the proportion of people owning DVD player was conducted at 10 o'clock on Thursday morning in a shopping center. So when they carry out a survey, right, 
they try to find the people that go to the shopping center at 10 o'clock on a Thursday. So they ask you to find a reason or give a reason why this is not a satisfactory sample. So again, this is something about the concept. Right, right so we talk about a sample. Okay? When we talk about a sample, usually we will prefer a random sample. Okay, so for this sample that conducted at a shopping center at 10 o'clock on Thursday morning, uh, is this a random sample or not? Alright, so you can ask yourself. Lah. So generally, can you imagine um, at this hour, lah, 10 o'clock on Thursday, generally who will go to the shopping center? Alright, so maybe you can um, write out in your own sentence. Lah. Okay, so maybe... For those who no need to work, so unemployed, will go to the shopping center at this time. Because if you are working, then that definitely you not able to go, right? This time, 10 o'clock. And then who else? Uh, maybe for those who retire already, uh, that at this time, maybe they will go to the shopping center. Uh, or maybe mothers, that means non-working mothers are with children. Uh, at this time, they might go to the shopping center. So when you carry out the survey, right, you only focus on these people. Alright, so you are not going to focus on those who are working. Okay, so because of this reason, so this sample does not represent uh, the whole population. Okay, so of course you can use your own sentence in a simple way to explain it. Alright, so in my opinion, this is the answer that because uh, at this time, only certain group from the population will be at the shopping center. So that's why it is not a random sample, it is not a good sample. Okay, so um, again, as I mentioned, these few years, they started to ask this kind of question more and more. And usually this question will contribute one or two marks. Okay, in the particular question. Yeah, alright, so let us continue for the next example. Okay, so have a look for example 28. Okay, so now if you look at this, they are talking about a survey of a random sample of n people. You don't know what is the value of n. And then there are 61 of them read the newspaper. So the 61 here, automatically you should know that it is actually the X. Okay, the number of people who read the newspaper. And then there's a symmetric confidence interval of a, a population proportion who read the reporter is 0 0.1993, okay, until 0 0.2887. Okay, so first of all, you should know that this is the lower confidence limit and this is the upper confidence limit that we have lah. They already give you the upper limit and lower limit already. Okay, so first of all, they want to find the midpoint of this confidence interval. Okay, so what is the midpoint? How to find the midpoint again? So midpoint means the midpoint of this confidence interval, the midpoint of these two values, right? So midpoint for the confidence interval will be 0 0.1993 plus 0 0.2887 divided by 2. So what is the midpoint value here? It should be 0 0.244. Okay, so I think earlier in the note now, we also learned about the midpoint. What is the meaning of the midpoint? The midpoint is the peak. Correct or not? Okay, then after that, they want to find the value of n. Okay, so I would like to link the value of p with x over n. So what is the value for P here? 0 0.244. What is the value of X? 61. What is the value of N? You don't know. Therefore, you can get the value of N very easily from here, which is 250. Alright, so for this example, they didn't ask you to find the confidence interval, but already give you the value for confidence interval. So from here, they want you to find some other values like P and also the N. So this is how we find out. So you need to know the concept of midpoint. 
make point of the confidence interval means that you add the upper and lower limits divided by 2. Okay, all right. So once no problem already, then we continue to the part number 2. Okay, so here they want you to find the confidence level of this confidence interval. Okay, so this is a very important question also because recent years they like to ask this kind of question. Okay, so please make sure that you put maybe five stars here to remind yourself. Please go through with this kind of question again before you go into the exam hall. Okay, huh? all right. So for this question, you can see that it is like asking you to do something in a reverse way. Usually, they will give you the confidence interval and also a confidence level. And after that, they ask you to find the confidence interval. But this is the other way around. They give the confidence interval. Then they want you to find the percentage of the confidence level. All right, so you need to be very clear how to find, do it in the reverse way. Okay, all right, so now to get the confidence interval, you need to get the value of Z first because the confidence level will affect the value of Z first, right? Okay, so I need to find the value of Z. So how to find the value of Z? Eh? Okay, so maybe I can use this value. Okay, so how to get 0 0.1993? So it is actually P minus Z, I don't know, then square root B Q over N. So your N here is 250, right? So when you apply this formula, you get the lower limit, which is 0. Point 1993. You can use the upper limit also, should be no problem. You will get also the same answer. Lah. Okay, so for this one, if you continue further, you try to get your Z should be 1.64559. Okay, so if you are using the upper limit 0 0.2887, your Z should be the same value as well. It shouldn't be too far away from this value. Should be should be the same. Lah. Okay, so now once you know the z already, then you need to imagine a bit. Lah. So I try to use the graph to show you. Okay, so this is a normal graph. Let's say this is your z, which is 1.6. Five five nine. Maybe I can put it as one point six four six. Okay. Then I want to know what is this area. Maybe. Okay. I want to know what is this area first. All right. The yellow color part. Okay. So to find out the yellow color part, it should be z greater than one point six. Or six. Yeah. All right. So now, if you try to find out the the, uh, the value one point six four six from the normal distribution table, it should be one minus some other thing here. This value you get it from the normal distribution table. Okay. So what is it? I don't know. You go and figure it out. You should able to get zero point zero four. Okay, so this 0 0.0499 means that this area, the highlighted area is 0 0.0499. Okay, so so far any problem? Okay, so if no, if let's say this area is 0 0.0499, so that means uh, there's another similar area also on the left hand side, right? Which is the same 0 0.0499 because you know that for a confidence interval both ends are symmetric okay both sides are symmetric therefore if let's say right hand side is 0 0.0499 then this left hand side also 0 0.0499 okay then I want to know what is the area for this part so once I know the area for this part now the green color part here, that means I will know my confidence level because my confidence level means the, the area covered in the center, right? Okay, so I'm going to do it. 
in the reverse way. So now I need to find the green color part. So how to get the green color part? Eh? So the area is equal to you take 1 minus 2 times of 0 0.0499. So you get a 0. Point, um, I think if you are not mistaken, you should get 0. Point 0 of 0 0.9002 so that means this area in the center is 0 0.9002 okay but now they want the confidence level so the confidence level should be in percentage right therefore the confidence level should be 90 uh, 0 0.9002 Multiply with 100%. So end up you should have 0.02%. And if you try to round it off to three significant figures, it should be 90.0%. Okay, so this is the final answer. Alright, so this is how we do it in a reverse way la, to find out the confidence level. Okay, so some students, they might find that it is a bit complicated. So that's why I try to uh, draw all the figure out for you. Okay, then in the exam, when you want to do this right, you no need to write out the value until so detailed, the, the step until so detailed. But uh, I try to draw all the figure here just to let you understand and uh, visualize uh, how we get the area in the middle, in the center here. Okay, so if let's say in the exam, you are lazy to draw all this graph and you're lazy to uh, write out all the methods here, all the steps here, then at least uh, what should you show is, you need to show how you get the depth. So this part you must show. This part you must show. The graph you can ignore, no problem. This graph you can ignore, no problem. The step here you can ignore, no problem. But you need to show how you get the 9002 okay but i show everything so that you actually can visualize everything i hope that you can understand right how i get the 90 percent actually okay so you need some imagination when they want to find the confidence interval uh, sorry confidence level all right so again this is a, a question that i think they will ask more frequently in the exam in the future so just make sure that you go through with this kind of question again. Maybe before you go into the exam hall, you try a few more times. Uh, try to understand the actual process. All right. Okay. So this is what we have for example 28. Okay. So for example 29. For example 29, I will want you to try it out on your own. But I just give you the final answer. Okay. I will still uh, try to write out the answer for part one they want to explain what is meant by the term random sample so a random sample means that a sample where um, every element or every person okay but we usually call it as element so every element has equal chance being selected or being chosen to form a sample so that is called a random sample okay so you can try to memorize this if you want i think this is also quite a common question that they will ask uh, about the sample or random sample okay then after that they want you to calculate a 95 percent confidence interval for proportion so this one i will just leave it for you final answer should be 0 0.321 and also 0 0.422 Okay. Then after that, for part number three, they want you to estimate the size of a random sample required for approximate 95% confidence interval for this proportion to have a width of 0 0.04. So again, this is the information that they give you. So the width is 0 0.04 and they want you to estimate the size. So the size means the end. Okay, so what's the formula for width? So for width is 2z squared bq over n, which is equal to 0 0.04. Okay, huh? 
all right so two is two lah z for 95 percent you go and figure it out it should be 1.96 okay so the p q over n because this is just an estimation right so the p and also the q are we are still using the 350 to find out the p and q okay so the p should be 130 over 350 q is 220 divided by 350 then divided by n this is the n that you want to estimate only all right so the 350 we are still use it to estimate the p and q all right because some student will tell me uh, can i just leave it as n uh? because i don't know what is the n uh? so i just leave it as n then estimate the n from here no it, it is not the method all right so to calculate the correct n we only estimate the sam this sample because the p and q we can still estimate it by using the original one all right so it is equals to 0 0.4 okay so if you continue further your final answer for n should be 2241 then 2242 we also accept 2243 also acceptable so your just make sure that your n is all in the whole number lah, the integer okay all right so this is what we have for the confidence interval for proportion uh, to me it is quite straightforward uh, except those uh, concept questions like usually for those concept questions i need to um read through it or maybe memorize it a bit before I go into the example. All right. So after you end, I uh, recover this example. That means that we have come to the end of the chapter four. All right. So uh, again, you can try to uh, answer all the question, the concept question, especially from chapter four already. All right. So in the next video, we are going to start a new chapter, which is quite long, and it is a hypothesis test. Uh. All right. So for chapter five, I think we need quite some time to complete it because it is a long chapter all right so i'll see you in the next video then